I worked with Dr. Martin Doherty, who then used to be at Stirling University. He's now a reader at the University of East Anglia. And he did a lot of work on theory of mind on how children understanding, develop an understanding of other people's mental states and beliefs and emotions. And he he basically showed me these ambiguous figures. And so, for example, the famous duck rabbit figure and said, there's something interesting with those figures because you have one stimulus that can have two interpretations. And he did a lot of work on this children's developing understanding that one thing can be two different things which de develops between the ages of three and five. So for example, the word bunny and rabbit can refer to the same thing or um, that a bat can be a fly mammal in one situation or piece of sports equipment. And he said, well, ambiguous figures are something similar. You have one stimulus that can be two different things. So I wonder whether there is some relation in the development. And so we started to investigate this. And so we looked at at which age do children understand that this figure can be two different things. And what is interesting is that by around the age of four, children have no problem to understand this can be a duck or this can be a rabbit. But they don't see both interpretations. So they conceptually understand visual ambiguity but they can't perceive it. And that's particularly interesting because the perceptual system is developed. So they should have the perceptual requisites to see both, but they just can't. And so that formed the basis then for my PhD is like what needs to develop, what are the specific cognitive processes that allow us to see the two interpretations. And the developmental approach is great because you have an age group where they can't see both and an age group where they can. So you can look at what what abilities do need to develop that allows us to see both. So children as um, participants are fantastic because you have age groups where someone can and someone can't do something at a certain age. And it allows you to look at the specific processes involved, which you can't do with adults. So that's how I got into um, researching ambiguous figures perception. That's a pretty interesting story. <laughs> I was trying to make it quick. I could make it longer, but that is the quick. <laughs> I mean, I'd listen to the longer version. That That sounds like it was... That's really fascinating, the idea that, you know, there's a point, because I don't think I've ever seen one of those images and not been able to flip between the two, you know, visual things. So it's interesting to think that there was a point in my life where those systems in my brain weren't there, you know? Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that if you look at some that are less famous, the duck rabbit is very famous. Yeah. And I would suggest if you look at one that is less famous and you do not necessarily know that it's an ambiguous figure, you might not be able to flip because knowledge of the ambiguity is a key fundamental process that is a prerequisite that is important. And that ties in with the fact that we don't just see what is there in front of us we interpret what we see and the more we know about the world the more it affects what we see yeah so yeah so i always do this with my students in my development of visual perception le lecture i show them an ambiguous figure that isn't well known and i ask them what do they see and usually someone sees um a cowboy and the other one sees a native um american or which it's, it's a bit difficult to identify the other interpretation. And then I said, keep looking at it for 60 seconds and 
the majority of them say they just see one thing. And then I tell them what the two interpretations are and I point out the different features of each interpretation and say, look at it again for 60 seconds. And what you then find is that the majority is able to switch. So the knowledge of ambiguity is key. Um, is quite important in being able to perceive the two interpretations. So this tells us that our visual system is very influenced by what we know about the world. So it's not just what we have in front of us, the colors, the features, it's really what we know about the world. And what I found interesting is that children at four years, even then know what the two interpretations are, they just can't see it, they can't flip. So we've been looking at what develops between four and five. By five years, the majority can flip and can see both interpretations. So we, we've been looking at what is it, what develops, what are the specific cognitive processes. And we found that there are two important processes. So one is inhibited controls. So you have your prevalent percept. So when you look at the duck rabbit, you first see one interpretation that is your prevalent percept and say you say it's a duck. You think it, you see a duck first. That's your prevalent percept. So what you need to do is you need to inhibit your prevalent percept in order to then switch to see the rabbit. So it's inhibitory control that is crucial. And the other is mental imagery. So making a mental image of the two interpretations, particularly the non-prevalent percept. So having a mental image. And those are some key um, cognitive processes that explain the ability to switch. So it's not a low level visual system um, development because the majority of the visual system is developed by the end of the first year of life. And so the visual um, developments, the visual processes required for seeing ambiguity are developed by the end of the first year of life. But it's a cognitive process and that's, I think, what is interesting. So I think having a developmental approach allows us to get more insight into the specific processes involved in into something. And what we found is that this being able to see the two interpretations um, around the age of five is obviously for very simple stimuli. So we haven't tested complex stimuli. We haven't tested any, you know, of these more difficult um images and i think that's a way forward to look at how the complexity of visual information affects what you see but we haven't done that yet <laughs>